Hello, I'm your host, Austin Hamilton. Welcome to Central News Center. And I'm Ryder Hoffman. Boy, I wonder about that Mad Monday Madness sale. Do you think it'll be fun? What is that? We'll watch Eric Erickson and tell us a little more about that. Hi, my name is Eric Erickson, and I did an interview with Jacob Freeland on the new Monday Madness sales that they're having in the school store. Here it is. What is your job here at the school store? My job is to make cookies, help my supervisor Amanda, and I do some t-shirt stuff. I'll put the t-shirts on coat hangers. So are you guys having a Monday Madness sale? Yes, we are. We okay. are having a Monday Madness sale of madness. How long will the Monday Madness sale go? It is all day Monday. What will be on sale? So each week we will have a specific clothing item, like to this week is sweatpants, and so all sweatpants are 50% off. How well do you think the sale will do? I think it will do pretty well. It will get attract a lot of customers every Monday. What do you think the best deal of the sale is? The best deal of the sale is getting 50% off clothing items. How long will we have these Monday Madness sales? Um, I'm not sure when we'll end them, but for now, every Monday, new item of clothing, Monday Madness. All right, thank you. Make sure you guys go check out the new Monday Madness sales for really good deals on clothing and help support our school store. I wonder if that'll look like Black Friday sale, like people shoving each other? Who knows? But maybe you should stretch like these gymnasts. Thanks guys. Here's a preview to the beginning of the Knight Riders Gymnastics Team season. What is your personal goal for the season? Um, to qualify on the for state. To place top three in all four events at state. <laughs> and hopefully place at state in more than one event. Um, my personal goal is to do the best that I can this season because it's my last year. My personal goal for the season is to help every gymnast achieve what I believe they're capable of. What is your goal for the team? Place top three at state. My goal for the team is to do well at state and for us to have a fun year together. <laughs> Win EDC and place top three at state. My goal for the team would be to qualify at least 50% for state, to have the team qualify for state, and place top four again. <laughs> what are you most excited for this season? Probably just meets and our team bonding. Um, I'm excited for bus rides. Making memories. <laughs> bus rides and staying at hotels. Okay, definitely bus rides and hotel stays. I'm really excited because we have a lot of depth. We have a lot, a lot of talented kids and a lot of young kids that I'm really excited to get into the program. When is our first meet? November 30th in Fargo. Our first home meet is January 5th at 2 o'clock here at Red River Valley Athletics. That's all we have here for the Knight Riders Gymnastics season. Let's wish them luck and hope they do well. Back to you, boys. From gymnast to hockey, let's see what Andrew has to say about Central's first win. We here at Arena for the beginning of Central Hockey Team's first game and first win for both JV and Varsity. JV winning by 6 to nothing and Varsity winning by 10 to nothing. How do you think the games went? Well, obviously, you know, anytime you get two shutouts like that and, you know, put some uh, goals in the net, you, you know, that's a good feeling and, and I think the games went very well for us. Do you think the rest of the season will go this way? Well, no, of course not. I mean, we were fortunate. Maybe we caught uh, Orno on, uh, you know, on the back game, a uh, second game of, of a two game. Uh, two games in two days actually within less than 24 hours so you know they're not all going to go this way there's going to be peaks and valleys and you know our main thing is to try and stay consistent uh, you know game in and game out and that's what we're going to have to work on. Man hockey's a pretty cold sport. Heard of wrestling? What's that? Let's let Sophie tell us about that. I'm Sophie Welsh and I'm here with Jeff Welsh the head coach for Central Wrestling. What is your biggest goal for the team this year? The biggest goal for the team this year is probably to finish once again in the top four in the region and duels so that we can get to the state tournament again. We'd really like to finish in the top two actually and then we'd like to win a match at the state duels and place at the state duels. And what will your biggest challenge be to do that? 
The biggest challenge in wrestling is always to keep guys healthy over the course of the whole season and having them peak right before the region tournament so they can qualify for state and do well at state. I'm here with Alec Humble, a senior on the wrestling team. What is the hardest thing about being a wrestler? Uh, the hardest thing, I think, are the workouts at practice and outside of practice. We have to do by ourselves to lose weight and get stronger. What are you most looking forward to this season? State and EDC. Hopefully place high in state and pretty high in EDC again. I'm here with Tyson Gass, a junior on the wrestling team. What made you want to be a part of this team? Well, all my life I've been a really competitive kid. Uh, I've always wanted to come first in anything I did and I've always just loved going at it. Anything that really involves hard work and uh, dedication, I've always just kind of flown right to that in wrestling. Wrestling is a mix of everything I really enjoy and love. What are you most looking forward to this season? Uh, I'm looking forward to state a lot. Uh, last year I I placed and I'm hoping this year I can place a little higher. Um, it's going to take a lot of work though. And how has wrestling changed you as a person? Wrestling has taught me that a lot of things in life aren't going to be easy. Nothing's going to really be given to you. What you put in, you get back out. And that's probably the biggest thing that wrestling has taught me. Make sure to go support the team at their home tournament December 7th and 8th. They have a current record of 1-1. One one. I don't know if I want to play sports. Well, maybe you'd like to join a club instead. Found this video. Let's watch it. Alright. Uh, my name is Miss Gr Mrs. Greenwood and I have been teaching art at Grand Park Central for 25 years. We're gonna Why did you create the art club? Um, I mainly decided to have it because so many kids wanted to get involved in something and get involved more into art and so by giving them uh, after school program it opened it up for more kids to join and just experience art and doing different projects. What are your goals with Art Club? Um, I'd like to make get more kids involved so they can experience different art projects and maybe just get more kids interested in taking art. What do you do? Um, so far uh, David Davis has taught everyone how to do origami we actually made dragons, but they turn out really cool. Uh, this is one, a lotus flower that he just designed. Um, so that was really cool. All right, another project that we've done is we made coil baskets. And the coil baskets were a lot of fun. Uh, we just take rope and wrap yarn that looks like this around uh, the, the rope. And then you hook it together with a figure eight. And we made baskets. Um, for the most part, some of the kids loved the baskets, some of them didn't, because it is a little harder to do. Can anyone join? Anybody can join. All you have to do is pay a $25 membership fee, and then you have to have a form signed by your parents before you can join, just to say that the, this is where you're at, and the parents will know that you're committed to art, and you are... Uh, going to be here till 4 o'clock on Wednesdays. When and where is Art Club? Art Club is on Wednesdays from 3 to 4. Um, it is in the art room here. There's really no number if you walk through the gallery and come into Miss Greenwood's room. This is where we're at. Um, we usually meet about right here so everyone's kind of like a family. Uh, everyone gets to visit and we work on the projects really close to each other. And I'll call that. I don't know, it looks like a lot of concentration to paint. I heard it can help you calm your breathing. Mm, let's watch Jack's video for that. Hello. Hey Bob. Do you enjoy breathing? Oh, you do? Okay. Thanks. Hey Dookie. How long have you been breathing? Okay. Sure. Just just I'm <laughs> sorry.
Speaking of breathing, have you heard of Julie? Let's talk about the dangers of Julie with Taylor. Hi, I'm Taylor and I'm at Graph Park Central getting opinions from teachers and students about Julie. Do you know what Julie is? Yes, Julie is a form of e-cigarette vaping. Do you think schools have a problem with this, especially GFC? Yes, I think schools all across the country are having an issue with dueling, both high school, middle school. Um, we talked about this during our tobacco unit and just the general opinion of the students when I asked, do you think dueling and vaping is an issue here at G GFC? Every student said, yep, absolutely, it's happening here. So. Do you think this will be a problem in the future? I do. I think until there are long-term studies of showing what this is actually doing to our body, it's going to continue to be an issue. Teenagers tend to feel invincible and this is just going to be a one-time thing. Nothing bad is going to come from it. Um, but that, I don't think that's going to be the case. Do you know what dueling is? Yes, I do. Uh, and I understand that it's worse than smoking a pack of cigarettes. So. Do you think schools have a problem with this, especially GFC? Yes, with the way they make the vapes, um, it's, it's hard to catch the kids in the act doing it because the, the vapes, the, they're odorless, so it's, it's a lot harder to catch them. Do you think we'll have a problem with this in the future? I think we will until the parents understand what it is and understand the dangers of it, and uh, then they can help us prevent it. What's your thoughts about dueling? Um, I think dueling is a waste of time. And, yeah, it's a waste of time. What are the opinions on dueling from JFC? I don't know, Andrea will tell us about climate change. Hi, I'm Andrea. I'll be interviewing Olivia Schultz for climate change. What's your stance on climate change? How do you feel? I feel like climate change is a really bad thing and that we should fix it somehow. So you do believe climate change exists? Yeah. Um, do you think there's some way we could fix it in the past year? Or do you think this will be a continuous problem for America? I think it's going to take a while to be fixed, but I believe we can do it. So what do you think is affecting climate change? Um, I think just everything that we're doing, like all like the factories, the exhaust, the trash in the ocean, everything yeah. is really combining together to affect climate change. Is there a way that you could help change climate change? And if you could, would you do it? Um, I would. I would try my hardest to, to change climate change. And like, if there was a way that I knew how to do it, then I would do it. Speaking of warm things, I wonder how my pizza bagels are doing in the microwave. Thank you, thank you, uh, for that little introduction. Um, my story is going to be on how one student can be able to eat 18 pizza bagels. Which, in my opinion, I think that's crazy. I interviewed one of the, the main, the one student who ate all the 18 pizza bagels. Here I am with Zach Moore, the person who ate 18 pizza bagels. Today I'm going to ask him some questions involving that situation. Well, how do you feel about this, Hunter? Actually, it was actually kind of surprising also. It was... Yeah. Well, it's going to be surprising next week. If I can do it. Because that will be a full pan. Full tray. 
sounds insane. Sounds it probably insane. is. Uh, well, you guys have to wait until next week. Yep, let's roll. To get the second part. Yep. Ooh. Let's get some school spirit. Drop a beat. Hello guys, we are with Miss Brooks and Miss Harlow for Grand Forks Central Drumline and I'm going to ask them a couple questions today. Hello guys. Hi. How Morning. are you guys doing today? Good. How good. are you? I'm pretty good. Um, you want to do Drumline and why? I always thought Drumline was an incredibly fun musical ensemble that can go out into the community that everybody loves to hear because it's uh, fast and fun and loud um, and I really enjoy having the chance to have our students go out and be a part of our society and community to be able to play and bring music to the world. Sweet. Um, would you like to add any instruments? Why or why not? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> why? Why not? Well, well okay, yeah. so yeah, if, we did, not? if we did add instruments, it would be called a, a pit orchestra, and basically what that is is it's like concert percussion, so it would be mallets and maybe a concert bass drum, maybe timpani. Um, those are, usually you see those with uh, really big marching bands that do a lot of competitions. Um, we don't do a lot of competitions, we kind of have that one drumline battle and the rest of it is just going out to play in the community for fun. So, um, no, we don't want to add instruments. We've got a good thing going. Yeah. Sweet. Um, out of all the instruments, what would you say is the best one and why? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're all incredibly important. You need to have every single group to make uh, the whole drum line sound like one ensemble. So every single uh, section is very important. I wonder if the drum line will play in the volleyball game. Let's go Knights! Hi guys, I'm going to call Melissa Thomas. She's one of the Northside volleyball coaches and she was the coach last year for the U14s. Okay, so the first question is, what is Northside Knights? Um, Northside Knights is like a JBA program for its club volleyball team. And it just it's from 12 years old to 18 years old, and it's a chance to play volleyball besides living here at school. Okay. So, what is the best part about this program, or what was your favorite memory? Well, for me, my favorite memory is like coaching girls that actually love volleyball still, and I like seeing people like enjoy it and get better. Why should people join? I mean, it's just a better way to um, get your skills, like increase your skills. It's also just a way to make friends. Like I met, met a lot of my best friends through clubs, so I really enjoy that. And it's just something else to do and be involved in. How long is the season? Mm, it's between two and three months. It kind of depends on when practice and when the last date of the tournaments are, but that just kind of depends on the year. And the last question is, when are games? Um, for 12 through 14, it is uh, five weekends, and it's normally on Saturdays, and then 16 through 18 is on Sunday, it's still five weekends. Let's thank the U.S. military for keeping our country safe. And Jay Rotsi is training the next generation. Hi, I'm Oni Thompson, and today I'm going to be interviewing Dominic Singer, and I'm going to be asking questions on JOTC. All right, what is JOTC? Uh, JROTC is a program for students who want to learn more about the military and have more military experience. So, what does JROTC stand for? Uh, Junior Reserves Officer Training Corps. Why did you join JROTC? because it seemed like a fun experience. My father is in the military. Um, why do you think others should join? Because it's a fun experience if you want to learn more about the Army. Will you be attending JOTC next year? I'll be attending all four years of high school. Nice. Is JOTC strictly based on military stuff, or do you guys get to do fun stuff as well? You get to do a mixture of both. So there is military aspects in it, of course, but like you get to do a lot of fun stuff every now and then. Nice. Was JOTC worth joining? Uh, in the long run, it was definitely worth joining. Alright, thank you Dominic. You're welcome. 
Thank you, Dominic Singer, for answering my questions. And I was wondering, what's you guys' opinion on JOTC? Hi, my name is Olivia Schultz, and I'm here with Madison Schultz. And we will be talking about college. How long have you attended UND? I started this semester, um, so I started back in August. Have you declared a major? I started as a psych major and now I'm a social work major. Why did you choose that major? I like the job diversity in social work better than in psychology and I want to be a therapist who works with kids and teens. And why did you choose UND? Because my dad works here so I get half off tuition. Okay. What's the best thing about living in the dorms? You're really close to everything going on on campus. And what's the worst thing about living in the dorms? My roommate and I don't exactly see eye to eye on things. Hmm. And do you have any advice for students going to college? In college, uh, attending your classes is mandatory. Definitely suggest that you make it mandatory. Also, staying on top of like your homework is really important. Time management. Okay. Thank you, Maddie. Wouldn't it be cool if we didn't have to make simple decisions for ourselves? Let's check out that possibility with AI. think about technology today? I think it's awesome because all the things I've been putting out lately is pretty crazy and I just can't wait to see the country become more technically advanced. The modern day technology is pretty cool. What do you consider modern day? Like iPhones, just devices in general. Okay. What do you think about Americans teaching robots how to shoot weapons? I think that's horrible. Okay. People trying to escape reality into virtual reality. I mean, I would do it myself if I could. But, I mean, it's not that bad, as long as you don't do it like 24-7 where you're like literally not in life anymore, and, like, that's just, no. Alright, that makes sense. Do you think people would try to escape reality to go to more virtual reality worlds? Um, I don't really think that because just real life is so much more real compared to VR, but like you can hold stuff and stuff like that in real life. You have the right to remain silent. Hello everyone, today I'm going to be interviewing a student resource officer and I'm going to be talking about their job. So I hope you enjoy. What do you like most about being a student resource officer? I, the thing I like most, I would say, as corny as it sounds, is you can actually tell when you've made a difference. With the kids at the school, you see them every day, all the time, every day. And you can see if what you've done is making a difference in, in their lives or whether or not they're showing up at class the way they're supposed to. You know, you can just tell. You can always see there, there's a difference. Is, uh, what, like, what are important procedures like when it comes to lockdowns, fire drills, bomb threats? We haven't had a death by fire in the schools for a long time. We haven't had very many injuries from fires in a long time. But now we're seeing more of an active threat situation and some of that stuff. And if I were to say to anyone to brush up on procedures, it would be brush up on something that would happen for lockdown, for that active threat procedure. If, if there is a threat that has entered the school, how are you going to react? And that might be just something where you have to talk to the teachers, because all of them be, have been through training. Talk to the teachers and see what's expected of you. That way, if something were to happen, it's not a shock. What do you think is the biggest problem facing schools like right now? Right now, I would say probably vaping. Um, the use of, of e-cigarettes and vape pens and all that stuff is through the roof. It's, it's amazing how many of those you deal with, how many you see. How many like uh, situations like in school have you dealt with with vaping? Me personally this year, I think we've, um, this year it's, it's not been, it's three or four only. However, I know district wide, they're seeing them everywhere. They're seeing them at every grade level from sixth grade up to um, graduating. But we are seeing enough of them that it is a concern. I will say this though, I have found more vape pens since I've become an SRO than I have seen cigars, cigarettes, or anything like that on the students. What do you want students to know about you who may watch this interview? I would say the thing I want them to know is that my door is open. If I'm in the office, I'm there to help out, to talk. Um, I talk with students all the time and not always in a bad, you know, you did something wrong manner. Sometimes it's just they need someone to talk to. Sweet. Well, thank you for this interview. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Central, for tuning in this week to Central News Center. Tune in on the 15th for more news and shenanigans.